trigger warning for this podcast may contain explicit material. Like every other episode we've ever done. What's up, everybody? Thanks for pressing play today. In today's episode of Nerd Nostalgia, you're going to find Brian, Irvin, and Trey doing a trio episode. Well, sort of. This is parts two and three of Crisis on Infinite Podcasts, where we had the Nerd by Word podcast, along with Just Don't Forget About Us podcast show, where you can also find parts two and three, but separately, on their specific channels. As always, please head over to Apple Podcasts, drop that five star, tell your friends, family, and coworkers about it. All right, y'all know the drill. Before we get started, here's a quick clip for you to enjoy. I'm Miho Nishizumi, and this is Nerd Nostalgia Podcast, and thanks for stopping by. Panzer of War! Oh! <laughs> and fuck you, Brian, with an I! <laughs> I was having curious. a conversation with a guy the other night and he said that the, he, he was already a chess guy and uh, you know, chess.com had like a 4,000% increase in, in wow. uh, members. Like it was something nuts. You know, I don't know if it was 4,000, but it was some nuts number that they increased as soon as the queen's gambit came out and had like a week or two to be out for people to watch it. And then chess.com just boom. Shut through the Within one month of that time, though, all of those 4,000% increase dropped because they're like, fuck, chess is hard. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I thought this was just like checkers with like more pieces. It's not. I thought I just got it's high, I looked easy. at the ceiling and was was going to be gifted at this. That's pretty. <laughs> if you haven't seen the show, that's pretty much what happens. Right. That's funny. I think the last time that uh, big pop culture influence from not even a show, but like the app, and I, I hope y'all know where I'm going, Pokemon Go. Do y'all yep. remember that? Yeah. Everybody, everybody was on Pokemon Go. Didn't matter if you were cool, not cool, a nerd, not a nerd. You were back on Pokemon Go. I couldn't buy the bracelet, so I was like, screw it, I'm done. <laughs> if, I if I can't get the merch, I'm not doing it. I want everybody to know that I'm walking around doing this stuff. Wait, you couldn't buy it? or no, I, I, Well, you? I couldn't couldn't find it. Yeah, it was like uh, sold out. It was sold out, and then, and then I kind of lost it. Well, I, I think... Also, I lost interest whenever I kept coming. I, my job at the time, I was always on the road and I had to go to properties and stuff like that around the area. And so as soon as it said, out, oh, you're not going to log this because you're too close to your car, or you're driving too fast in your car. And then everywhere I went, no matter where I was, it was always like a, a Pidgey. I was like, I'm done. I can't, I can't do anymore. I'm not, I'm not catching any more Pidgeys. I'm not doing it. I want Muse on every street corner. Every street corner. <laughs> Something different. Something so, no, different. So it, so it was Muse. like real Pokemon. So it was pretty, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> oh, Rattata. Okay, cool. Pidgey. Okay, cool. Although you have to wonder, is the only way to get fire Pokemon to go to like Hawaii or other islands that are, <laughs> a, you know, like built around volcanoes? Because otherwise, if a Magmar shows up in your fruit store, you got to run, dude. Like, that's, that's <laughs> not safe. <laughs> well, and I think I, I think I dropped it too early because and, and I say that like it's a good thing because I dropped it. You know, OK, I'm done with it. I didn't spend any money. It's good. Like I got away from it, you know, before it got to be a problem. However, like now I, th I now I think again, I haven't been on it in years that you can do battles and stuff like that against other. It's a lot more interactive. It's, it's a lot it's, more interactive, a lot it's more. The, it's options the, it's the game you wish it was had it when come it out. out. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's but so again, much more I'm interactive. Out. Don't bring me back in. I'm out. <laughs> I'm going to download it right now and see if I can uh, catch uh, anything other than a Pidgey while I'm sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to happen. Although, okay. Here's the thing that kind of makes it seem like what Pokemon would actually be like if it was in the real world, because there's one out there who's going around catching all the legendaries, but 99% of the population's like, I got bug Pokemon. That's it. I found a Caterpie. <laughs> Done. Well, and then, yeah. And then there's the ones like sitting on the, sitting on the park bench, like, or sitting on the, the dock, like fishing. Magic, Just waiting, magic, he's magic waiting cart, for magic you. Cart, <laughs> magic cart, magic cart, magic cart, magic cart. No, Done. And then he he's goes wreck shopping everybody. That dude's not a traitor. He's trying to like get those fish to live. Like those, that's like his family's nourishment. 
<laughs> just eating Magikarp on a regular basis. Goldines. Mm-hmm. I'll bet you those things are delicious. It's like fried catfish, man. Yeah. You get it. <laughs> All right. I'm literally going to download it right now. <laughs> Haven't played well, this game in five years. Yeah, I wish I could long. say the same. I've been playing. I have to. Ha- I have to keep it on my phone because whenever I visit my, you don't nieces have and nephews, to do anything, Irvin. You when I visit my nieces to, and nephews, they're like, "Can we do play it. on your phone?" No, I'm like, "Here, no. here's Pokemon." No. Yeah, that's a cop out. You, <laughs> I did actually. During, no, during quarantine, I would go on runs and uh, hatch my eggs and stuff. So definitely, definitely got back into it during that time. See you. You, my good friend, should not really. You should. You shouldn't be allowed to download apps. I, I like. I like games. This is true on, on apps. So, how much I money played, have you uh, spent on Pokemon Go in the last? No, no, no. I, I, I haven't spent any money on it oh, because Chris and Ryan. Quick aside, Chris and Ryan. I, hopefully, you are aware of this by now. This is actually the typical way we do something, where we will start with a topic or we'll start with an idea, and then we'll just wander into the woods and get lost there for a while. <laughs> we eventually find our way. It's really like, fascinating. Do we park the car over here? No, it's over there. Yeah, sorry, I'm just like uh, saying, like, yeah, hey, we have three tier. You know, this is what we do. We do this, this, and this. it's like, no, nah. it, this is our. <laughs> like, this oh, that's that sounds wonderful. <laughs> yeah, like who does that? They do. <laughs> they do. Professionals, exactly. Dude. Get you get you a German born co host. He'll keep you organized and strict. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, speaking of game or show having influence, I would definitely put Cobra Kai in that category too. A lot of yeah. kids love karate man. A lot of kids yeah. are getting back into it. I want to get back into it. it. <laughs> so I maxed out at I think uh whatever the third belt is. If it's yellow, maybe yellow or orange. I don't I don't remember. But that's that mm. was my max. I think purple for me. Couldn't even tell you. <laughs> nice. Karate. My nephew's actually a black belt. He was a black belt by like, by like six years old or something like that. I was like, you overachieving piece. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Reining it back in, since everybody's gone, you know, they said what brought a little shining hope to uh, 2020 for them. For me, it was going to be two things. First one is going to be a comic book. And then the, the second one's going to be a show. And we're all going to nerd out on the show. So, spoiler alert for you guys. I've been collecting a lot of it lately. For you nerds, it's what we pretty much talk about every single show. And so, comic book, Last Ronin. I was so (laughs) impressed with The Last Ronin. It was exactly what I wanted it to be. It's what I predicted it to be. And so, I was super excited that that was going to be the case, even though Brian actually had a a good idea. Do you remember the the premise of The Last Ronin, Brian? I think you had said that you wanted Leo. Oh, yeah. It was uh, basically Old Man Logan. Mm -hmm. It's the best way to view it. It's just like... The IDW Kevin Eastman version of what would happen if we put the old man Logan storyline with a turtle. And I think it worked out perfect. I think it did. And spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't read it. And it's been a while. So, I mean, you know, you can. You yeah, can that's why it. I didn't dive into the detail. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I guess I guess I won't. I won't you I won't, can do it if you want. <laughs> it's been out for a while, like you said. <laughs> so obviously there's four brothers. The obvious choice, I'll, I'll say that it's not the obvious choice. The choice that they went with, I think, was absolutely perfect. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to really move the, the story forward and develop his character. It's It was great. I just absolutely loved it. I, I was excited for it, and it did not let me down. And it will not let you down. So if you're considering reading something, that's what I would definitely, it, definitely do. It gives you the most potential growth character-wise because yeah. the, that mm-hmm. choice, and we're basically spoiling it without spoiling it, but <laughs> it gives you the most story to tell with the, the choice that they made. The, the, the most, you know, like, how did we get here? I'm so intrigued to see issue two and see how did we get here and where are we going to go? That's coming around the corner, isn't it? It shouldn't be. Shouldn't yeah, be I think they've pushed it back a little bit. I thought it was going to be December or January. So I'm, I'm still waiting. Yeah, I'm hoping it's I'm hoping it's sometime soon because I was excited for that first one. I, I saw where Ben Bishop posted that he had just drawn his last page for it. So hopefully soon. Okay. Yeah, it was pushed back to February 17th of this year. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. So we got some time. Yeah. I was in the uh, the LCS yesterday, and they had one of the uh, the gold foils, the one one per store variants. I was like, oh, okay. like, oh this is so cool. <laughs> so, okay, so that's the first one. It's a great read. Guys, I need to get y'all. I think I'll buy y'all a couple of second print copies and, and give it to y'all so y'all can read it because I think, I think the guys will like it. They're Turtle fans. Actually, the part of my Christmas present from Brian with a B it was a it was a pizza box. Inside the pizza box was a 
Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle pizza cookbook. So oh, I'll, cool. I'll, show, I'll show it to y'all. I'll, I'll post That's it. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was a cool gift. And then Trey gave me, what was it? Top 100 Marvel influential comic books. And so I was yeah. like, oh, dude, I could totally do a segment of where I just read off of this and then post it online. But really cool, really cool gifts from, from the guys. Nice. So second thing, second positive from last year, a lot of good shows. Number one show was the most recent. And I think y'all will all agree. The Mandalorian season two. Those last three episodes. Absolutely. I mean, wow. Right? Wow. Very, mm -hmm. very cool. I mean, enough to where watching season two of The Mandalorian made me start the unending task of watching Clone Wars, the animated Clone Wars. Same for me, dude. Like get started past it season up. three and, and you'll you'll be golden. It gets it gets so good. No, no, no it, it's good. It's just it's just so much. It's a lot. You so know, much, it's, yeah. It's so much to watch. I, and I I don't I yeah I don't have a problem. I'm not like bored watching it or anything like that. I think enough happens in each episode and it's like really interesting and fun. I just never got into it because I was like I don't have time to watch. What is it? Seven seasons? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, six yeah. or seven. Yeah. I'll I'll say this. I'll say this. Clone Wars was was good. I think Rebels is better. I think Rebels is some of the best Star Wars content, and especially with season two, um, a lot of that is is going to kind of intertwine a little bit more. I highly recommend Rebels. I've gotten to the point where it's uh, so after I watched Clone Wars, I was like, well, what do I do with my life? I just dedicated all this time to this. <laughs> like, what do I do? And I was like, oh yeah, Rebels. And so I watched season one. I'm into season two right now. And it's starting to intertwine. Like it, it intertwines really mm -hmm. good at the beginning, but I just got to a, a certain Disney princess. Ooh, spoiler. And so, um, so I'm curious Wait. to see what. Um, <laughs> when does what Rebels happens. take place? Rebels is like concurrent. It's a little bit before the original trilogy, a little bit before A New Hope. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so between three and four. If you look at, um, I don't know if you picked it up, but like uh, the High Republic issue that just came out this past week, they have like an mm -hmm. updated timeline, or you can even Google it. Like a canon it, it, it time. Has yeah, I, that's what I was looking up right now. Yeah. Let me see. I posted it in in one of the groups that we're in. Okay, so the timeline starts with the High Republic, and then you have the fall of the Jedi, and that's where the Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, the Clone Wars and Revenge of the Sith take place. From there, you have Reign of the Empire, and that's where the new show, The Bad Batch, is going to happen, and Solo, a Star Wars. That's uh, that's Brian with a B's favorite uh, Star Wars movie. I love maybe, that movie. Maybe behind. I love it. Yeah, do you? Nice. I love okay. it. Solo got some flack, man. It did, yeah. I, I, I didn't mind it. I love me some Emilio Clark, too. Mm. From there, we have Age of the Rebellion, and that's where Rebels takes place then you have rogue one a star wars story a new hope the empire strikes back return of the jedi from there you go to the new republic that's where the mandalorian is taking place and then finally what should not be canon but is canon rise of the first order and that's where you have resistance the force awakens the last jedi and rise of skywalker take place so that's that's where they're at i think that mandalorian definitely helped me be able to get back into star wars again right because i think we we give yeah we give the, the the latest trilogy a lot of flack um just because it deserves it for every reason yeah okay that's fair but the man and again i i Irvin, you posted something about it, you know uh favreau undergoing back surgery for <laughs> entire, uh the entire franchise but just such he a saved he saved that franchise him and Filoni, Filoni and favreau are the star wars gods right now give them a triple trilogy let them do their thing give me taika watiti on wait a you know, triple trilogy direct... that nine movies? triple trilogy brian you That's heard too it. many movies triple <laughs> trilogy <laughs> we coined we coined that term in one of the episodes see this is what happens all the time we coin terms or brian will sometimes but we've been drinking and then yeah, we'll, we'll be drunk, and I'm the only one who remembers it because I come back and edit, and they're like, "Oh yeah, we did say no that, recall huh? of that." <laughs> no, <laughs> but uh, yeah, give them give them the keys to the kingdom and let them just let them run with it. it yeah, it, it definitely again to me that's saying a lot. It's like okay, I'm gonna watch this one season of this one show, and completely rekindle my interest in an entire franchise that's you know spanned over four years. Right. So like that's. That's saying a lot from from how many episodes was it? Like seven? Eight. Eight. eight, yeah. eight. So from, yeah, from eight episodes, it really just brought me back into the fold. And that's 
that's pretty high praise for me. That doesn't really get to watch the TV that I want to watch. You know, I can tell you what's going on with Doc McStuffins and Rainbow Ruby <laughs> for sure. What about Ladybug? Ladybug, yeah, Ladybug. Man, I have watched that show so many times, and it's not that bad. It's really not That's that bad. Not, but yeah, I don't want to yeah. watch it again and again and again. <laughs> sure. And again. I, I think that's an interesting point that you make is the rekindling that fire because it seems to have done that to like Lucasfilm's vision at large. Like yeah. after the dumpster fire, the turd burger that was the rise of Skywalker, they they came out and said, well, we're like, we're basically done. So then like the Mandalorian comes in as this like golden goose that has, you know, done a lot. I, I love season two and I, I'm a person that's like, okay, we have to be careful with nostalgia, pun intended. Sorry guys, but we're on this uh-huh. nostalgia podcast, but you, I think you have to be careful with it because if you lean too much into it, you're not happy with anything. So that was it, the error of the trilogy that, that came out. Basically, what was it? Uh, Force Awakens was essentially a rip yeah. off of a new hope, right? See, and that's why I ride for the last Jedi because whether you like the choices that they made in that Ryan Johnson was telling a different story than what you'd ever heard. And I think the main problem with the sequel trilogy is there was no through line. There was no plan. Like nah. it was JJ made a movie. Ryan came in and made a great movie. Mm-hmm. And then, well, he, people, he made a completely people were, different movie. A completely different movie. I'll give you that. And then there was backlash. So JJ comes back and says, oh, let me try and tie it all together. And it was a really haphazard band-aid on a bullet wound type of deal. And and so while it, it was a little bit frustrating for, for Mandalorian to circle back and do a whole lot of, hey, Boba Fett's back and Luke is back and everybody's back and everybody that you loved is back. It felt a little bit heavy handed. The one aspect of where I can kind of excuse that is, is because it's kind of tying the big massive gap from the original trilogy to the sequel trilogy. How did we get here? Because I think that's probably the biggest problem that I have with the sequels. How the hell did we get here? Why is, I understand like it's a really interesting take to make Luke Skywalker like disenfranchised with all these things. And he doesn't believe that anymore. He's basically turned into a Jedi Logan, but like, how did he get there? I need more than one flashback scene in The Last Jedi. I need to see all of that take place. Show me. So you I'm think smiling. That that's I'm what smiling doing? because <laughs> we have extensively discussed that one flashback scene. Yeah. Uh, I'm also the- smiling, Trey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and what that entails. But no, I, I agree with you. We're, yeah, how did we get here and why was this story told uh, in this way? It, it Honestly, it's... It was told this way because it's like me, right? I'll I'll have a conversation with somebody and start talking about one particular topic. And then I'll go into my office or I'll walk down the hall, do whatever. And I'll continue th- thinking about that conversation internally and continue thinking about it, continue thinking about it. And about 20 minutes to 30 minutes later, whatever, I'll walk back in and start talking about something completely off the wall to the other person. Yeah, but there's a sequential order of things that has happened in my mind in your head you that, know, that no, no one, one else can see exactly. exactly. And so, without yeah, without actually telling the story um, of the in between, it yeah. yeah, you you lose a lot. You lose a lot. I, here's here's an interesting point that I'm dying to get your guys' take on. Okay, so the CGI Luke, um, it, it wasn't as bad as Rogue One, but it wasn't good. So if we're going to go for Scorpion forward, King, freaking <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so if we're going to go forward with this and let's say, fingers crossed, we get like a, a Luke series and we get some kind of Dave, my, my co-host is a big expanded universe guy. So he wants, you know, like a Grand Admiral Thrawn trilogy heir to the Empire. So Hashtag Robert if, we, Downey Jr. if we do that. See, I would say Cumberbatch over that. I think uh, I think Cumberbatch would be a little bit better than RDJ. Uh, I, but so if we were to do that, I think we have to recast a young Luke, and I think Sebastian Stan would be perfect. Facts, I, because I, I if agree. you, I think it's everybody one thing. Would say yes. If, if if it's one thing to have a two minute scene with CGI face, you cannot have an entire series or you know extended footage on that. It's not going. Oh, because it's all you would focus on. That's yeah, all right. you would focus on is the exactly. bad. You you would like again. You would in that two minute scene, it was exciting enough and yeah. it was brief enough that 
that you weren't focused in on. You it. you saw it and you were like, that looks bad. Uh, <laughs> or that doesn't look as good as I think it could. But yeah. it didn't take away from what the scene was. And, and, and again, it was it was pretty quick. And it was, you know, it was a lot of musically done so well. Mm-hmm. Um, the choreography, the choreography, like of him taking down everybody or all the uh, the bot or whatever they were, the I forgot what the name. I, I love the message that we sent because we're so used to Mando being like Mando's a badass. Like he took one of them on. Here comes uh, Luke and just like oh, crush can lightsaber everywhere. Like it was, it was amazing. You're like, it oh, almost yeah. makes you wonder why Mando didn't use the dark saber to do that exact thing. There's that. <laughs> There's that. Good, but but yeah, yeah. it di- it didn't take away. It didn't take it away from the episode or from the series or yeah, from the from the season or anything like that by having not the greatest CGI, yeah. but and- you cannot have a standalone. Mm-hmm. Luke well, is the main what, character or even a main character. And you, and you bring up an interesting point. And I want to give shouts to Ludwig Gorenson, who is over, who's the main composer on this series. The One of the best things about The Mandalorian, I think, is the music. I think mm-hmm. it's just fantastic. Yep. I, I mean, from that cold open from every episode, when it hits that Western, like, boom, I'm like, oh, shit, it's Mando time. Like, I love it. <laughs> I think another point. You can't uh, you can't have a 70 year old or however old Mark Hamill is. I'm sure, you know, he's as fit as anyone that age is going to be. Yeah. But Jedi are ballerinas, you know, they're they're doing flips and jumping and, you know, all kinds of stuff. And you can't have uh, him doing that. Christopher Lee was jumping around young Yoda in <laughs> Attack of the Clones. Bet. So that's not it. That's not a good <laughs> thing. That's not an endorsement. <laughs> Right. Okay, well, but but here's the thing is, my question is, what would a, a Luke story even be about? I mean, from what I can tell, the time gap between Reven- or Return of the Jedi to Ben exploding the, the Jedi Temple is, he's essentially establishing a school. Does that involve a lot of cool acrobatics, or is it more of, like... Does he get to like the twenty year mark where when Ben is growing up and he's like, oh Jesus, I've got to work on tenure for Grogu, you know, like his 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 tenure review is up. So that, that's like, what, big, what what is the story about? I no, that's I my think biggest, I think this uh, question is yeah. Go ahead, Trey. I th- I think the I think that the story should be immediately after the fall of the Empire, immediately, which this kind of is right, and it's him. Tra- it's a a, a Mando esque. Uh, storyline of him traversing the galaxy looking for gifted looking for his students and and kind of bringing the word out you know it's he's, he's kind of a religious missionary that's a good that idea point. but that's it's really like good idea all of the you know all of the interactions that he has on the different um planets and with the different peoples and the cultures and stuff like that and trying to basically restart the jedi order from nothing and so then, the question becomes, how does Luke Skywalker turn from Jedi Knight to child abductor? That fits in line with the Jedi message. And that's why the Jedi come off looking so bad in the prequels, because they have all those little kids yep. that can't have any contact with their family. They do, do that in Clone ben Wars Solo's. as well, right? They, they address that. I think they have a whole episode dedicated yeah. to that. Yeah. Man, the Jedi sucks. Why do we want to know more about them? Yeah, that's why I love us. Ah- that's why I love Ahsoka. She's like, yeah, f- screw this, I'm out. Yeah, I'm no longer a Jedi. Greatest, yeah, greatest arc there. But I want to know more. Now, here's let me get y'all's opinion on this. What if you had Sebastian Stan as a young Luke Skywalker, and then you had Mark Hamill as old Luke, but had them both in the same series. I would I love that. Would... That's what I hope they do with Lando. I want Billy D. Williams and Donald Glover. I, I think both would be fantastic. Be Lando cool. what, guys? I, I always mess up the last name. <laughs> it's a running joke. He messes it up so often that I can't even say it anymore. Like, for real. Like, <laughs> like I mess it up. Uh, not, you know, I always try and mess it up just to make fun of him, but now I... I can't even. I don't say know it. what his original Good. name is. I, I can't. Yeah, I've lost it. I've lost Good. it. I'll, ne- I'll never be able to. You deserve it. Too funny. If you made a Lando show, what would it be about? I mean, like I, mean, I don't know, ooh. but they if are were... making one, so I, I have no idea what they're. But gonna like, do if with you it. were Smuggle if... Run. Oh, if, if I, I said, was hey, making Chris, one? you're the showrunner. Yeah, yeah. They said Chris, you're okay. the showrunner now. What do you make the story about? It looks like because like there's been rumblings that both they want both involved. So it, I'm thinking like it would be kind of like a a, a remembrance thing. So where he's like. 
you know, his adventures. It picks up with his story after Solo ends. Like, how did he get to Bespin, the Cloud City? You know, how did we get there? Kind of like I referenced before, tying those things together. Because, you know, I think Donald Glover is super magnetic and and, and one of the, the brightest spots of Solo. And, and so I think to be able to flesh that out, I think it would be super interesting. Okay. Just don't bring who is who is the actor of Solo who played Han in Solo? Aaron Aaron Reich, Alden yeah. Aaron Reich. Yeah, leave him out. Yeah, <laughs> leave him out. Wow, leave him out. I don't, I don't, I don't want to see him. I don't want him to. The, there's no interaction between no, Han no, cast, and cast, Lando. Uh, Harrison Ford, and then just DH him to look like whatever his name. Al, Al, Alden Blundchike. Harrison Ford doesn't give Star Wars anymore. No, he's it's totally done. It's honestly the best thing, dude. He bought, you know, he bought his like third house in the Hamptons with with yep. appearing in the last two, or you know, the last two that he was in, and he's like, "I'm good forever, forever." <laughs> Sammy's asking him, "Were you a Forest Ghost in Episode Nine? He's like, "I don't know what that is." He's <laughs> <laughs> like, "Leave it alone." <laughs> we go crash a plane like in Dennis Quaid. Oh, and then yeah, JJ just wanted to treat Star Wars like Lost. I have a lot of gripes with those seven, eight, nine. Oh, oh the <laughs> mystery really. box aspect of it. Yeah, I mean, I like JJ. Don't get me wrong. Like we all experience Lost in one way or another, whether it's through our friends or watching it ourselves, but or personally going to purgatory. Yeah, I mean. I just don't see the point of always like trying to like do a twist. Like I think we could tell about episode nine. Emperor Palpatine twist sucked. <laughs> Hot garbage. Same thing with the uh what was Anthony Circus's character's name? Uh the uh, Grand Moff uh Scarface. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Exactly. Snoke. There you go. I don't know why that made me remember it, but Scarface, hey, Snoke. Got, it's just you, like, yeah. what a shit twist. It's like, ah, it's just multiple Snokes in the test tube. It's like, ah, there was no point to that. It just killed that character for me completely. Yeah, it was bad. Well, I, what they were just writing as they were going answer. along, though. They were just yeah, they admitted as they were that. Going along. What'd you say, Brian? With the oh, what would have been a satisfying, like, if you took the the foundation as as shaky and mysterious as it was of force awakens what could have been a satisfying development of that rather than uh what ryan johnson did which was essentially strip the foundation burn the ground salt the earth uh pr pretend that after you blow up five worlds you can somehow equivalent uh make those guys equivalent to the the resistance which again was nonsense <laughs> With episode nine, especially, there was way too much take backsies, like we were in kindergarten. It was just like, ha, Chewie died. Nah, Chewie's not dead. Oh, see, 3 po doesn't remember you. Memory deleted. Nah, he can remember everything. It's just like, give me something. Nope. Like, stop being afraid to kill these things. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's, that's awesome. Just that's commit to the kill. That's, 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 that's it. Commit to that, it. That's the teaser line for the episode. <laughs> so, yeah it, it, it turns out so like Han Solo is actually still alive like yeah he, uh, somewhere he came, <laughs> he's, he's really living in the cloud city the no no he got he got like the robot legs like the spider robot legs like Darth Maul did so I was just about to say Darth Maul <laughs> yeah yeah kill your creations do it yeah also I have a question at the end of Solo if I'm trying to intimidate someone with my Darth Maul presence why do I turn on my lightsaber when you're That's that true. far away. <laughs> yeah, it's like, when I get there, <laughs> in four parsecs. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we're going off of awkward episode nine plots, we could have lightsabers mysteriously appear behind the person. Oh, so. no, I liked it. I, that was actually my favorite. <laughs> that, uh, true, like, honesty. Like, honesty test, that was my favorite part because it was established in episode eight that you could use the force to transfer matter and i thought that was an interesting use of that i get it. i thought it was cool that they were adding in i don't know if i necessarily liked it i thought it was cool that they were adding new uh powers things that we hadn't seen before originally i was like mm, i don't know as time has progressed i'm like okay maybe maybe it is cool 
You know what would have made that scene a lot better had the Knights of Ren had their own lightsabers, or at the very least, the the whatever the the royal guard that used to defend the Emperor Palpatine, whatever or those the characters, the Ren guards or whatever. Yeah, whatever the purple thing that they used to like fight, basically Jedi. Um, if they had that, that would have made it so much better. Or if they had evidently Beskar, you know, steel. And that's what they were wielding <laughs> instead of fucking pieces of metal from the junkyard. You know, uh, I was so disappointed with that. I, okay, I think, did go ahead. I think the biggest sin for me of Episode Nine was one of the one of my favorite things to come out of the Last Jedi was the fact that it could be anybody. Anybody could be Force sensitive. Your parents were nobodies, and this little boy with the broom. He could be a Jedi too. Like that was the lasting image that you have from the last Jedi. And then JJ Abrams comes in in episode nine. He's like, LOL, just kidding. Um, she's actually a Palpatine. <laughs> it makes the it makes the universe seem so small. Everything circles back to Tatooine. Everything yep. circles back to the Skywalkers. Yes, and like, the Palpatines. The Island. like there's only two families. It's like it's like the Montagues and Capulets of a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with that to an extent because you can still have the little boy with the broom at the end, but the 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 triple trilogy was a story about these two families. I mean that that was the story they were telling, and I think that when you've got like I don't think they knew the, that. Who did? Everyone. On I think it Earth? started off with Skywalker, the just the Skywalkers, and then. Eventually, by default, the you know the Palpatines. They had a bullshit. Yeah, even yeah. even the untouchable, even the untouchable original trilogy. They didn't know that Luke and and Leia were sisters, th- which is why you had them making out. So oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. from no. the hip as well. So yeah, back I, I, I think make out. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're exactly right. I, I think that they started with like here's an interesting set of ideas, and then they kind of looped things together. I, I think probably just because they ran out of last names for females, they're like, oh, let's just make Leia Skywalker. <laughs> um, even though it's Organa, and she's got a whole backstory. Is that, and all that. Sp- yeah, Space Alabama. Is that what uh, where they're from? Sp Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies to our Alabama listeners. Um, yeah, sorry. So I'm I'm okay with that. I, I think that I think we've already hit on it. The, the biggest issue was just that man. We've already covered this like so many times. The, the biggest <clears throat> issue was just that there was no direction, no cohesion at all between the three movies, and that <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> Is it though? Is it fine? <laughs> It's I mean, not fine. We keep talking were, about it. It's not fine. They're, they're not fine. No one's fine. Not not, fine. No one is okay. <laughs> they leaned. They leaned on. Well, it's Star Wars, and your dumbass is going to go watch it anyway. So who cares? Obviously. Yeah, no, it's, it's a right. That's the problem. <laughs> we are now Disney. We do no wrong. <laughs> House. I have of a couple. Mouse. Of, oh, House of Mouse. House that's of a, Mouse. Uh, <laughs> that's another thing that uh, that did come out um, for 2020. That was really good was soul i don't know if you guys have watched that not yet i've been meaning to it is it was really good good. it was really really good good. there's too much controversy around it for the wrong reasons oh yeah i just yeah people really need to turn off their brains and stop thinking politically or racially yeah it's it's movie with a touching meaning that's what it is (laughs) yep that's what pixar does it's like death Make your kids think. That's the Pixar motto. <laughs> what's, the, what's, the, what's the controversy yep. about it? I haven't really gotten um, far that into the, the of it. That the voice of one of the characters who has no physical form uh, is voiced by Tina Fey. And Tina Fey it happens to be a white lady uh, that helps along one of the characters. And so I that she was is Greek. The, I don't know what she is, but that's not the point. If I've learned anything from the movie My Big Fat Greek Wedding, it's that Greeks and white people are not the same. It's a documentary. That's correct. It really happened. Based on true story. Based on true events. I, 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 Actually, I have, I have several Greek friends and even to an extent, um, you know, being Latin very relatable that's actually my one of my sister's favorite movies just because it, she was like it's so relatable i'm like yeah no it really is but a lot of my greek friends are like no that's i mean that's pretty spot on like that's that's what it's about here when you're a greek american hmm. yeah the small I, and i and i say small i mean i know it's it's garnered some attention but mm. small controversy aside just a great flick and, right 
and Agreed. definitely worth the watch. Um, and so, yeah, that, that they snuck that, that they snuck that feel good right in at the end of 2020. I think what was it? Christmas day is when that yeah. came out. So um, yeah, that's a very cool, very cool thing that happened uh, in 2020. What other, I'm trying to think. I know that the, tr- the trolls world tour came out. <laughs> And Fuck that them. has notoriety for, for, for hey, way. Can you cut this part out? Uh, <laughs> no, no, that has way more notoriety than the movie itself. Like, don't watch the movie. Just don't do it. You don't need to. Don't do it. But that was, you know, DreamWorks releasing a movie straight to, uh, what was it? Uh, Video on demand and everything like mm-hmm. that. And, and circumventing all of the movie theaters. And to the point to where the movie theaters are, were in such up in arms that I'd, I don't know if another DreamWorks film will actually be released in the theater, even if we get theaters back. Right. So it that was a that was something that happened during all of this that really kind of made you rethink. And now it feels like that is going to be the the way things are from going forward, which is fine for somebody like me that has small kids and is not going to take them to the movie yep. theater because it's a waste of time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Totally. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in the minority as well. Like for me to go to the movies, it would be like a hundred dollars a pop, like to take my entire family, and that's just not going to happen. That's why I'm happy that drive-ins are making a resurgence. It was mm-hmm. very beneficial to all Drive-in families of all incomes. You get to watch two flicks. You hang out with your family in your own personal vehicle, very COVID friendly. Yeah, you know, it's a great experience too. Not many people in our generation, especially, have ever experienced that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What have y'all seen drive uh, the drive-in this year or last year? I actually went to go see Bill Burr, the comedian. Okay. <laughs> Did a show uh, in Red Bank, New Jersey, and it was on like an open field. They had cars drive up. It was very weird to experience that. They give you the option of either sitting at a picnic table or you just sit in your vehicle and you just listen to comedy. It was uh, definitely different, but that's the times we live in. <laughs> okay. Anyone else go to a drive-in this year? I saw Bill Burr this year. Mm-mm. On I saw him in Star space, Wars. Space, space, space Boston. Boston. <laughs> space Boston. I love that a guy that hates Star Wars is in Star Wars. That's like the best thing. <laughs> that guy has criticized the franchise so much. <laughs> I thought he did a great job. I thought he, uh, he had, did. You know, he had that a redemption scene, arc. It's great. It was great. He did that great scene job. at the table, the scene at the table where he's yeah. just like, you can visibly see him getting more and more pissed off until he like caps him. Like is, is the one of the highlights great of character. the season. Great character development. Yeah. That just was, that uh, we were talking about that last night. Mm-hmm. We were talking about that last night. It was a really, really compelling scene. Mm-hmm. Host Irvin, what else we got today? Host Irvin, um, that's that's <laughs> all that now that, uh, that, now that, that yeah, we had. Now that we're off our tangent. Yeah, we're on a tangent for sure. Uh, we covered, you know, the 2020 stuff. We uh, we tangented a little bit. That's a new verb. You're welcome. And then, uh, guys, what uh, what else? We we had discussed possibly El Dorado. I, I I'd have to rewatch it. I haven't watched it. Yeah, we'll do that next time for sure. Yeah. But. Um, this is this is the road to El Dorado, like the Boom. mid mid two thousands uh animated flick by that wasn't Disney, that was uh was it DreamWorks? DreamWorks. Yeah. DreamWorks. Yeah. It should be on Disney Plus though. Should be. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, I've seen it and probably multiple times, but I'd have to rewatch it again. So yeah, we can do it later. But uh, absolutely. Yeah. I just remember the blowjob scene. That's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah so it's so a, like I, I said this in our, I, I said this in our group chat so i'm a spanish teacher i've been a spanish teacher for 10 years and then so i was like road to el dorado oh i love this movie as a kid so i threw it on as like one of those last days of the semester like before christmas and that yeah. scene came on and i was like oh fuck i'm fired <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's yeah I, i'd have to rewatch that i haven't seen it in forever such what, a great um so I guess it's, it sounds like we're capping off. We know what the next episode is going to be. So looking forward to the next crisis on infinite podcasts episode. I'm curious though, what, uh, what are y'all looking forward to in 2021? So we've discussed 2020, some of the highlights from there. What are you looking forward to in 2021? Whether it's a TV show, movie, a comic that's coming out, a book, what are you looking forward to volunteers to go first? 
Well, I'm a I'm a hopeless Marvel shill, so I'm excited to get some MCU content. You know, it's it's been quite a lull. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dry you know, spell. And and I think uh, with a lot of the reveals from Investor Day, it looks like they're gonna finally kind of turn a page into something a, a little bit different. You know, I'm hearing the reviews of WandaVision is something completely different. They're gonna kind of go sub genre on us with a lot of different stuff. So, I, I think it's unique enough to keep fetching interest as we go along. That's awesome. I've always been, I've always hoped that they did that because I felt there was always a formula with their movies, Mm -hmm. which is fine. The formula was working, you know, don't, don't fix what ain't broke. But if, if what you're saying is true, then hopefully they, they are going to, you know, have those subgenres of the movies like Shang-Chi, for example, I'm full heartedly expecting a Bruce Lee movie. Yeah. And like basically by Marvel. Yeah. And and what I love about going forward too with Marvel, even as big a fanboy as I am, is, is they're doing the guardians again in, in the fact that it's characters that even hardcore fans really don't know a whole lot about. Like Shang-Chi, I, I've read maybe two Marvel team-up issues. I didn't know that character was involved. Yeah. yeah, so like, so when I went into Guardians, part of the reason that that movie stands out as one of my favorites in the MCU is because I had no expectations going in and then it had no reason being that good. It, it's a, Yeah, it's a great movie. Absolutely. Okay, so you're looking forward to Marvel movies. Uh, let's go with Brian with a B, then we'll go Ryan, no B, Trey, and then I guess <laughs> with a T. Hey, what's coming out this year, guys? I, I don't even know. Well, I can I can read through a bunch because I was looking at this. Um, so I'll, the, the I'll, I'll new... screw your order, Irvin. I don't I don't play by your That's rules. Fair. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. God, God uh, forbid I, I actually schedule something and, and you know try to <laughs> try to plan work. and you guys are like, no, not gotta, doing that. Okay, gotta, hold on. I got I got mine. Fuck off mine. the yoke. I think... I think Flashpoint is supposed to be coming out this year with the live action one with Ezra Miller or whoever. 2022. Ah, shit. Well, yeah, let's, assume, yeah. let's assume I'm waiting for the trailer for Flashpoint and I want to see old man Michael Keaton as Batman, whether he's Batman Begins old man Bruce Wayne or he's Dark Knight Returns skinny Batman. I don't know. But that's what I'm looking forward to is the trailer for Flashpoint. A lot of rumors and spec around uh, Keaton. I think uh, mm-hmm. a potential HBO show, yeah, um, yeah. and beyond series um, or, or movie. A lot of lot of speculation around that, and I'm hoping that we do get that because the fans would lose their shit for Batman Beyond. Think about how awesome that would be if he's like you know Clint Eastwood in Gran Torino, just grumpy old Bruce Wayne like that. That'd just mm-hmm. be so perfect. That'd be great. Minus the racism. Minus the racism. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 Please. Oh. God, yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> what about you, Irvin? Me? Uh, I don't know. There's so much stuff that's coming out. Uh, right around the corner, I think we have uh, Mortal Kombat. I'm looking forward to that. That's going to premiere on HBO. I don't mm. know if they moved it. Post it. It's When was it supposed to come out? I think they moved it like March, but I could be wrong. So if they change the soundtrack, that. I'm not watching it. What's that? They changed the soundtrack. <laughs> change the soundtrack. I'm not watching it. That was amazing. There's another movie that's going to be low key by Ryan Reynolds. He's starring in it. It's called Free Guy. That's going to be really good. Oh, yeah, the video game movie. Yeah. 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 I'm looking forward to that one. So I would say those are the two big things. Nice. What you got, Ryan? I'm a little mixed. Uh, I don't know when Doom Patrol or Titan Season 3 are coming out. Uh, I'm one of the minority that actually enjoys both of them. They're just obnoxious DC shows that I'm happy those characters are finally getting some light shed on them in a live action style. Um, mm-hmm. Really excited for that. I'm very curious on how they're going to do a Green Lantern, all the different lanterns in a live action style. You're shaking your head no, Trey. It's okay. Yep. Just, uh, <laughs> just going to run away from that one. Oh, well, there's, there's only one Green Lantern, and it's Ryan Reynolds in Trey's eyes. Always. Don't you don't you don't you shit on my favorite movie? It's a rough uh, call. <laughs> hey, hey Ryan, I have to ask you because I tried Titans. I love Doom Patrol. I tried okay. Titans. I tried Titans, and it's it's like it's really heavy in the first like three episodes. When does sure. it get good? Ooh, you know, <laughs> good is a loose term. <laughs> It's definitely uh, because I'm with you because I love those characters and I want to see them on screen. You know what? Like, if you don't really 
loosely base it off the comics, you'll be okay, is the best way I could describe it. Okay. Yeah, we already had a Deathstroke with the Arrow series, which I'm a mixed bag of emotions on the Arrow series. It's like maybe season three was the best season of all time, in my opinion. Um, but Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, I mean, that version of Raza Ghoul, Raja Ghoul, Ghouling, <laughs> whatever your pronunciation is, it, I like that a lot. That's when I stopped after that because I was. Then it started getting season four on. It was nah, right? But yeah, I'm just looking forward to those. Uh, I was a big fan of concerts and road trips. I mean, yeah, I go to antique stores and thrift stores and different things like that on a minimal level. But once the world gets back to normal again and we get a proper cure, that's definitely things I'm looking forward to. Very cool. Nice, Trey. What uh, cap us off here since uh, since you messed up my order? I didn't mess up your order. I messed up your order. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Put that on me, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> Don't be shitty, Urban. <laughs> uh, so there was a, yeah, there's a lot of stuff, man, that that got pushed back, right? There's there's mm. so much stuff that we've been hearing about for ages, and is finally maybe now going to come back. One thing, and I'll, I'll kind of stay on my same line that I did for the things that came out in 2020, uh, Sabrina came out in 2021 uh so chilling adventures sabrina season four is out right now on netflix super dope i'm maybe halfway through or so i have to wait on the wife because she likes it too and so when we're both sitting down at the same time to actually watch something it's few and far between so that that's cool but yeah as, as far as movies i think movies are what i'm excited for to really start to see uh kind of like what chris said you know marvel's starting to come out with some stuff but um dune they're getting a remake of Dune in twenty twenty. Yeah, and there's uh, no wait. If 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 it stays like this, it's going to release kind of like Wonder Woman did. Yep, and that's really cool for me because yeah. I'll actually get to see it when it kind of comes out, you know, or at least yeah. somewhere around the time that it comes out. Uh, so, Dune, very exciting. That Matrix is, Four also coming out on on there, right? Matrix Four, uh, No Time to Die, finally getting our mm-hmm. next James Bond mm-hmm. installment. Yeah, um, Top Gun. Maverick. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm kind of on the fence. You know, we are a nostalgia podcast. I'm on the fence about it, but it is nostalgic, right? Like, yeah. You know, you again. They change the soundtrack. I'm not watching it. So, <laughs> from a uh, from a from a one to ten scale, so how you don't excited... want Taylor Swift playing while they're uh, flying jets? Why not? <laughs> well, no. He said he wants the soundtrack to be the same. I want to know, like, if Taylor Swift or or. Uh, you know, like you whoever else is playing. You have my answer to that. Okay. You don't. What if it was? What if it was Lizzo? Okay. So, no, I'm, no, I'm down. Let, let her, what, let her, let her do it, man. One to ten scale trait. How badly are you wanting ten being the highest? A shirtless volleyball scene to happen again? Like that? That has to happen for you, right? Who's shirtless? But it's the it's the drones. It's the like AI drones that are shirtless. Perfect. So it's kind of nice. like a Tron scene. Sold. There you go. <laughs> Sold. Here we go. Tangent. Sorry, guys. Uh, another one, and something that we kind of touched on was the, the you know lesser known comics that are now getting kind of some limelight. Uh, Kingsman. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kingsman's have it's supposed to have a, a prequel or a, or an origin story uh, come yep. out this year, which is awesome because like Kingsman has both of them were really good. The uh, first one especially was awesome. Uh, mm-hmm. Second one was still pretty good. Um, but this one won't have Taron Egerton, which I think kind of made that franchise. So it's kind of like, I don't know. I don't know um, how, how that's going to roll out, but, I, but I'm excited for it nonetheless. Um, I think that's going to be really cool and, and something, something different from the franchise. Um, on another nostalgic note, Ghostbusters Afterlife. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see what happens. And my boy Paul Rudd in that. So we'll see what, what happens. And I think... Uh, Wolf, Wolfhard, gang time. Yeah, Finn Wolfhard. Yeah, from yeah. Stranger Things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think he's in it as well, uh, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken. So that should be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, plenty of Marvel stuff that's been pushed back. Um, but yeah, some very exciting movies that again that we've we've heard about, and we you know they've been talking about putting this stuff out for two years now, so. We'll see. It looks like uh, just looking at my list here. It looks like uh, Tom Cruise is coming back with a vengeance because Mission Impossible Seven. 
um, is supposed to be coming out too. So he's you know, you know what I'm not looking forward to? Space Jam: A New Legacy. <laughs> no, that's not a real thing. <laughs> oh yeah, starring LeBron James. That's right. Uh, <sighs> although I heard he was funny in Trainwreck, so maybe it'll be good. He was actually pretty funny. That was not a funny movie, but he was he was pretty funny in it. I think we can all agree that we we just do not find Amy Schumer funny, like not funny even a little bit. No, <laughs> she's no. fucking terrible. <laughs> I also heard LeBron James wants to create a whole. He wants to redo every single horror movie that he loved as a kid, except every single one of them be a different minority. I just thought that was an interesting premise. So like he wants to do like a uh, African American Jason. He wants to do like a uh, Asian Friday. I mean uh, Freddy Krueger, which all right. And no, we really need to make him Asian. Or do we really care about his nationality? <laughs> yeah. Can you even is, tell? I was like, like, can you like, tell burn victims' nationality? I, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. So yeah, I'm just very curious if uh, we're going to see the LeBron James monster universe soon, <laughs> as he promised. You know, the, the the controversy I imagine is going to come up is now it's like, okay, now we have a minority pedophile that got set on fire. Like, is that the right <laughs> message to send? It's but you, I mean, you saw that they tried to, was it Universal, tried to reboot all of the monster franchises and that fell flat. So yeah. good luck with that, LeBron. You, you do your thing, well, man. Well, and, th- and that was one of the... <laughs> Brian touched on an interesting point. That was one of the reasons that they cast Benedict Cumberbatch as Khan in Star Trek Into Darkness because, and and it was like he's not supposed to be white. But then they were like, well, we don't want to make an Asian guy the 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 antagonist, and then that's a bad look. So they were kind of betwixt and between on that. Khan Noonien Singh, did good. an Indian originally played by was uh, Ricardo, Ricardo Montalban Mexican. Was he Mexican? His, Hispanic of some sort. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Latino, la- Latino of some sort, uh, now played by Benedict Cumberbatch, <laughs> the whitest <laughs> man on earth. <laughs> <laughs> but, but honestly, maybe maybe that's like a really good thing or a really really bad thing that like in the future, Indians are just British people. <laughs> maybe that's maybe that's the worst thing. It's maybe. like the re- reverse reverse imperialism. <laughs> no, it's, just, it's just it's just mega imperialism. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like what happened with uh, Wreck, if anybody's ever seen that, back in the early 2000s. So I'm sure you heard the American version, Quarantine, where it starred the sister from Dexter, and it was a bunch of people that were trapped inside of a apartment complex that had a severe strain of rabies that would make them become vi- like vicious zombie murderers, because apparently that's what rabies does to humans. Yep, yep, yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> so Wreck came out nine months before that like nine or ten months before that and then america is like that looks like a good idea and they basically did redid the whole entire movie just in english with different actors did not change the plot at all oh wow (laughs) so (laughs) that's how i'm viewing the lebron james basketball jason Voorhees. so (laughs) we'll see what happens with that project (laughs) oh lebron (laughs) oh well Cheers to that. Cheers to 2021. Absolutely. <laughs> that is a perfect note. I think uh, I think that's a great way to cap off the uh, the program. This has been awesome, guys. We have had so much fun. I can't wait to hear this on the uh, on the other shows. Yeah, for sure. Side note, I caught a Pidgey. <laughs> <laughs> I got a bunch of Pokemon I don't recognize because anything after the first 151 are all bullshit, so... <laughs> there you go. That's spoken like a true old man. I am that. Get out of here with your new stuff. <laughs> we, don't need, we don't need 900 Pokemans. We just need the originals. What? Uh, what? I, I'm curious what they're at. Ryan, do you know that by chance? What? What the number is? Like 960. Wow. God bless. That's a lot. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Brian, Brian was being like he was trying to be exaggerating, like, oh, we don't need nine hundred, and they're actually 900. yeah, yeah they're about nine hundred yeah. more, <laughs> slightly more than nine hundred. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that is going to wrap us up. Thank y'all so much. Catch us on social media, nerd.nostalgia.podcast. Go ahead, uh, 
Chris, take it away with uh, with y'alls. Yeah, it's, uh, you can find new episodes of the Nerd By Word podcast every Monday on whatever podcast platform you so choose uh, and nerdbyword.com. You can find us on Instagram and Twitter at nerdbyword. Boom. And then my man, Ryan, take it away. You can find us on Instagram at Don't Forget About Us Podcast Show. Yep, it's a long and obnoxious at Don't Forget About Us Podcast Show. It is there for legal reasons. <laughs> now, I also have a other Instagram called Bin Hunters, where I would go to different antique stores, flea markets, etc., and I would show off the finds that I would find through the decades. So you can follow me on either or, and we're available on the same platforms as these guys, Nerd Nostalgia and Nerd by Word with Spotify, Anchor, Apple, etc. So that's it. And if you haven't, make sure you drop a five star on all three of our uh, shows. That's that's it, guys. Bye. Bye. Awesome. I'm going to stop recording. Oh, he just dipped. <laughs> Who did? Dude, he's got Chris to be. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. It's like I'm out. well, I'm getting I'm getting messages from my wife too, so he probably was as well. Like, yeah, like, um, time, you time have 15 minutes, then I tell them bye for you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is awesome, man. Uh, thank y'all so much. We'll catch y'all on the next episode. I need another drink. I'm out. <sighs> well, you heard Trey's drink clank and Brian's yawn. So you know it's time for us to head on out. Thanks again for joining us. We'll catch you on the next episode. And remember, stay nerdy, my friends.